Hey, my rail fans, I got another one for you today. We are at French Creek State Park here in Elveson, Pennsylvania. Uh, this place is up in the woods, it's really nice. We've come here quite a few times and I'm actually gonna record it for you. They have campsites, they have cottages, they have yurts. Um, they have a lake down the other end, it's called Hopewell Lake, which you can fish and uh, launch boats off of. They have a pool here, main campground. Um, this is a really nice place. They have full hookups and electric sites and also just uh, electric sites. But um, without further ado, let's go check this out. Oh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button either here or there, depending on which one my camera's facing. And also hit that notification bell so you know when I put out some new content. But until then, let's jump on this box car and let's go check it out. So everybody, I'm gonna show you French Creek State Park. My wife is holding the camera here so that I'm driving. Um, we're coming into the area where the main office is at and also the pool. I'm gonna show you how far away the pool is from the main campground. But off to the right there, there's the main entrance or the, uh, that's the main office for the park. And coming up here is Hopewell Lake. Hopewell Lake is uh, divided up in a federal side and a state side. Hopewell National Historic Site is over on the other side over by the federal government. This side is taken care of by the state. There's a hiking trail that goes around it, but you can boat launch off of here. You can also um, picnic off of here and fish in that lake. So that's the lake off to the right down there. And then the pool is up in the back. But um, the main office in the lake is a uh, about a mile away from where the campsite is at so you are in the woods at this campground but uh, just wanted to show you they also have trails all over the place I've actually done one of their trails the Lenape which starts in the state park goes all the way through the federal side over at Hopewell Furnace and then you come back around and you come back over into the uh, campground there's a uh, part of the Appalachian Trail well, not the Appalachian Trail. There's a trail that hooks through here that hooks in the Appalachian Trail that runs through here. The time of the recording, I forget the name of it. <laughs> but they have group camping here. They have three different group camping sites. And uh, this is one of my favorite state parks because everything's clean. And their campground also has full hookups. And they have four different loops, A loop, B loop, and C loop, and D loop. A and B both have your full hookup, or A and C both have your full hookups. C is the most uh, sought after. B just has electric, and D loop just has um, general electric and nothing else. And you can only have dogs in the A loop, C loop, and I think the B loop. But I'll show you some of them here in a little bit. So I just want to make a quick note since I'm down here. This is Park Road right here. And as I turn, this is the campground road to take you up to the campground. If you come down, hit this stop sign, and you turn to the right, that's the uh, southern exit out of this uh, out of this park. Also, the admin building is down there, and the pool's down there. And the state park side of the uh, Hopewell Lake is down there where you can boat fish. It's uh, pretty nice. The uh, lake is shared by the National Park Service, which is Hopewell Furnace National Historic Site, which if you want to go visit there, you make a left and you'll hit an intersection, State Route 345, you hang a right, and you go all the way down about two miles and Hopewell Furnace is right down there. Something to check out. But... Um, yeah, I want to show you that intersection. State Route 345 is pretty much what you need to get up here to the park. And to access that, you access off of 341. And the current brand is about a quarter mile up this hill, so we're going to take the hill and I'll show it to you when we get up there. So a couple things as we start coming up to the contact station here at French Creek State Park. So this campground is divided up into four loops, A, B, C, and D. A and C loop are both pet friendly. B and D are not. You cannot take your pets into those areas. Also, A and C are your full hookups, and the C loop is actually 
the more sought after, the more popular. A loop, which I'll show you, was just refurbished about two years ago. They put in full hookups up in there. And they're pretty nice spots. Everything's in the trees. But let me just show you this and let's continue. So come in just like any other campground. Oh, by the way, I don't have a gimbal, so everything's raw. Here's a contact station. There's nobody in it right now. But uh, I can show you the campground here a little bit. So it says the NC loop are your pet friendlies. Shows the whole lake over there. Oh look, an old Verizon pay telephone. Green, huh? But uh, for this place, you have to come out to drop your garbage off. They don't have cans within the park itself or the campground. And all your own little park, all your visitor parking is down here or off campground road up here. So they do have a water fill station, which is right here at the beginning. So if you're not a full hookup site, you can fill your water up here. And then back here in the woods, they have a uh, pretty nice amphitheater that I can uh, show you here. We've come in this park for a while and I haven't filmed it. So I wanted to show it to you. It's one of the nicest state parks. It's 45 minutes away from King of Prussia and the mall area and the tourist area. It's pretty nice. But uh, they light it up at night, of course, safety. So you can see where you're going. But uh, here's the amphitheater. Now, we started coming here when COVID was still rampant and where that bad word was still going. And uh, they really weren't showing anything. We've come a couple times every year after that. And uh, on some weekends, we haven't seen any movies or anything, programs being done here. So I don't know if they're gonna pick that back up. But again, that's the amphitheater. And we'll head back out on the road here. So just across from the amphitheater, as you come up the camp road, there's a little hill right here. That is your dump station. Again, if you need to dump your black tanks, your holding tanks, you're not a full hookup, you can dump right here. You come right out of the campground, which is another hill right there. Make your right go dump. Straight ahead, that will take you up to loop D. We're not gonna go up to loop D. Unless I have time later on, we'll go up and uh, do a drive through in the vehicle. But they also have a horseshoe pit up there too. And some more overflow and visitor parking right here. But loops A, B, and C are all off this road right here. Which I will show them to you as soon as we get up there. Oh, and as of August 2023, the sign right here says check out time is 3 p.m. So you get a little bit of time to uh, enjoy your morning before you gotta pull out of here. But your horseshoe pits are right down there. Again, your overflow parking. Uh, might not be able to get the playground. About halfway up the hill, they have a playground here in the park. Place for the parents to sit. And a little garbage can right here. And across from that area is Loop A. So Loop B just has electric hookups. I'm not gonna show that whole loop. Probably not even show the whole A loop. Um, <clears throat> but I'll take you in there to show you anyways. All these loops are one way too. Everything goes to the right. And again, these sites are all in the woods. 
which is nice. If you want a wooded campground, this is the nice one. It's pretty nice. So these sites are both A1 and A3 in the A loop. By the way, all their sites are paved. So you can get them all in. We stayed in loop A once before, right after it opened and we stayed in this site right here. It's the first one, as soon as you make the right in here. And they actually moved the fireplace. The fireplace is actually on the back side of that loop before. But uh, yeah, I'll wood it. Again, as we're coming up through the uh, A loop here, you can see how everything is backed in. You could pretty much fit a good sized trailer in here if you got a fifth wheel or a toy hauler or a regular travel trailer. And all of these loops have their own wash station, male and female bathrooms, plus things to wash all your dishes with. And they're all in the middle of the loops. And again, because this is a dog one, they do have a dog pickup area. And they all have a camp host too. For DCNR. That one has water and electric. Oh, by the way, their RV sites are both... 30 and 50 amp and usually their hookups their full hookups are toward the beginning and the end of every loop like the first five or six sites on the front side and then uh, five or six on the back side or on your exit way out and then about halfway through on each side it goes to just water and electric and eventually electric and then on the back end of the loop <coughs> at least for the C loop it goes all primitive. Got a person down here. Sure, I don't get any license plates in there. Again, they're nice size sights. As I said, as you come down toward the back, the electrical hookups end. They still do have water areas so that you can fill up buckets or your coolers. But toward the back end, they become primitive. And there's some pretty cool ones on the sea loop, which I'm going to show you that once we get over there. But until then, I'll see you in the next loop. So I want to show you one more thing with the A loop. This is also over in the sea loop as well. Um, they're just more pronounced on the sea loop and I'll show you the primitive sites Which is something that I like you can back your vehicle up And then you walk down Into your tent area So you're not on top of your vehicle. So you got your campfires and your tents down down the back And this one's connected with that one Which is the next site over And again, you can walk down. You got a couple little gnats in there and uh, not be near your vehicle and actually be in the woods a little bit with your tents. So as we walk up to the B loop, again, no pets in this loop. It's right up from the A on the right hand side. And uh, I'm just gonna go in here and show you the beginning of it again. Again, everything is one way. And they do have signs up, bound area for no pets. And the sea loop actually butts into B over here on the other side. And there's actually those signs within the tree line saying that there's a, 
the boundary line. I just can't go in there. But um, I've walked the Bee Loop a few times in later season when there isn't a whole lot of people here. If they're open, I want to show you my favorite sights on the Bee Loop. Again, as we do walk through the Bee Loop, it's in the woods. It's just electric only, no water hookup. Oh, that's a, that's a nice big sight there. That might be for the host. Let's backtrack here a little bit. That's B7. So if you just want electric hookup and you can fill your tanks up, go to the B loop. It's pretty nice. Something to also mention about this uh, campground that it is handicapped accessible. So if I can find one through here, I'll take you over and show it to you. But they've got everything paved all the way up to the, the fire pit. Okay, somebody's in a wheelchair that they can, uh, they can access the fire pit and enjoy their time too. There's the bee loops cleaning area right there. And that's your D loop up there through that area there. You can see their refreshment building right there, a refreshing station. So right here. Here's one of the handicap spots. They've got them in all the loops. So. Everything is concrete right up to the fire pit so everybody can be inside of them. Just pretty neat, something I want to show you guys. With handicap spots, you can rent them, but it's got to be one of the last ones. If it's the only available, you can take it. If you want to camp there. But uh, they're mainly reserved for handicap. So there is somebody in the sites that I like, but the ones that I like are B24 and I'm gonna guess B21 because uh, they've got two pine trees back there. As we leave the B loop, just to give you a heads up, um, the B loop. Maybe electric only, but it can accommodate your larger rigs. Um, when you book online, just make sure you read to see the length of trailer a certain site can take. Um, I don't want to film with people in my shot, so I don't have anything come back to me, but the site that I want to show you guys, there's somebody in it, he's got at least a 40 foot fifth wheel in one of the sites in the back and down the B section so they can still fit in here <clears throat> just that you're electric only morning that's why I'm uh, breaking the video up a little bit so I'm not getting people or license plates on the video But again, coming out of the B loop, no pets in that loop, electric only. We'll head you up on the C loop. So I really can't pan to the left a whole lot, but this park has three yurts, which are off to the left here. And then they have two cabins, which are right here. They all have their own parking. And there's also some guest parking right here for the C loop. Actually, they've got two yurts and two cabins, three cabins. I was wrong on my count, but there's one of the yurts right there. Two of them, and they've got three cabins. There's one in, in here, one there, and one there. And then we come into the sea loop. So the sea loop, as I mentioned before, is the most popular. 
has some of the nicer sights. And if you're going to try and book this area, these sites right here, one, two, four and five, I believe, are the most popular sites in the sea loop on the right hand side. They're the biggest and most opened up sites. They are all full hookup. Off to the left as you're coming out of the sea loop, this one's kind of doubled up. You can park two vehicles there. You got some bigger sites back there. Which I'll show you when we come back up on that back side. Um, the reason I'm showing this one is because this one's actually my rig. There's our Brinkley right there. She looks nice. That's C1. Um, this state park down here in southeast Pennsylvania, just outside of Philly and King of Prussia I was talking about. Um, the weekenders take this place up quite a bit on the weekends. Um, your chances of getting a set on the weekend are hard unless you book uh, in advance. But during the weekday, you can get your, your sights. But as I mentioned, the full hookups are in the first couple on the uh, entry and teach loop, and then the first couple on the last sites of each group. And then it moves into water electric only. That one's a full hookup too. This is the loop that we try to get to the most because, again, it is the most sought after and the nicest. <clears throat> and here's the back side to go up into the bathrooms, the restrooms, your wash stations. And again, it is one way. To start getting in the back like the other one, you uh, don't have the electric anymore. And remember, the sea loop does allow pets. So, again, these sites with all of them toward the back here, and then the B loop and the D loop, you got to fill your water up at the beginning of once you get in the camp and uh, you have to dump everything at the end. And again, everything's in the woods. That's what I like about this campground. Kind of showing you the whole sea loop because it is nice. But as we're going up to that one camp that I want to show you here in the sea loop, um, just because uh, I do hope National Historic Park is down the way here a little bit. Basically, they have a blast furnace down there that was used and was built pretty much during the revolutionary times when the British and Washington was here. And this whole area was uh, used for forging and bringing materials to the blast furnace to make uh, make iron casts. And they also grabbed wood from here to go into uh, kilns to be turned into charcoal, pure charcoal. And uh, this is where all the settlers came. We got their charcoal back there at New Hope. Nice size site right here. But the site that I wanna show you out of all the ones that I talked about being primitive, is this one, number C27. And I remember how I told you, you can back up to them. Well, look how deep into the woods you can go with this one.
So you can sit your tent here and you're around or you're in trees here. Or you can stick it down there and that's also where your fire pit's at and your picnic table down there. But you were, you were in the woods with this particular site, C27. And you park your vehicle up there and just bring everything down here. So yeah, you're still at a campground, have a site, but this one, you really are more primitive, primitive and you're in the woods, which is something I like, it's pretty neat. Now I gotta get myself back out of here. So I looked, the handicap spot that we were in uh, last week, because we're kind of on a three-part trip as this is being recorded. Um, there was a full hookup site, it was a handicap spot. It was the last one remaining in this area. So we took it and it's right across from the camp post. And it's one of the nicer sites that we've been on. But there's somebody on it, so that's why I'm explaining it to you. But uh, we'll finish up there. Sea loop coming to the end. There's the wash house. There is your sea loop post. And actually, the site that I was telling you about, C42, is not occupied. We brought our fifth wheel in right here, it's close to the edge. So we had everything over here. And then uh, the camp back here. Again, one of their handicapped spots. They even have the table set up, so you can bring a real chair up underneath. Oh, and all state parks now have this little thing right here. You can hang a lantern or something off of it. That's C42 in the sea loop. The only thing that stinks about being in the first spot as soon as you come in here, again, because it's one way, I have to drive all the way around to get out. But it's still a nice campground here. Again, full hookups, sea loop, allows pets. And uh, here's my Brinkley again, coming around the other end. So that's sea loop. Uh, I think I will take you on a drive up to the D loop just to show you that one really quick as we go. But uh, until then, wait for the next one. So as I stated, I'm going to take you up on a drive through the D-Loop. If you see after the right there, you'll see it there's uh, overflow and guest parking. I've never been up into the D-Loop, so this will be my first time as well. So this is pretty much straight primitive. Sorry, everything's a little shaky. I've got you on uh, a mount on the windshield of my truck so I can pay attention here. Again, it does have a bathhouse here. It's off to the left in the middle. But this one is straight primitive. There's no electric back here. Do I have a class C over there? This is mainly for tent camping. Or if you're gonna boondock.
quick down and dirty of the D-loop. This uh, looks like it's one of their older loops too. But again, everything is uh, paved. There's a parking place for your bathhouse. And that's the D-loop. So I'm just showing you the pull from the parking lot because it doesn't look like it's open right now. But um, it's the first time up at the pole. I didn't know how far back it was. It's all the way at the top of the mountain. But um, come and check it out. A lot of people said that this is a really nice pull. It's up uh, the mountain behind the admin building. On the way up the mountain, also by the pool area as part of the course, I've noticed that they have a pretty decent size frisbee golf course. This is just one of them. It's up by the big picnic area up by the pool, the top of the mountain. This is a large picnic area, but coming all the way up the mountain, you'll see different points for the uh, frisbee golf. Also up behind the office, they have another playground, another parking lot and also a baseball field. This is all down the hill from the uh, pole. Well, everybody, what better way to finish off this video of French Creek State Park than to come into Hopewell Lake, which is in the background here. Uh, you can launch boats here, you can't swim here. And this lake, you gotta go up to the pole and you can fish here and you can also rent boats. But uh, this is a really nice campground. It's close to a lot of the tourist attractions down here in Southeast Pennsylvania. And uh, basically on the other side is a dam that leads you into Hopewell National Historic Park. But until then, I hope you guys enjoy this. See you down the line. Catch you again.